so I have a good question from C. Shauna Brook. Kind of off topic for backwater, but what is the best setup and or bait for triple tail? And it looks like, oh man, I do I do love me some triple tail. So Cape Canaveral area is like a triple tail mecca here in Florida. Uh, the cans are the big buoys, the big like uh, buoy markers as you head out of Port Canaveral. This time of the year is a staple area to go for big triple tail. And Luke's been getting on a couple here over in Tampa Bay lately. Uh, I think it depends on where you're fishing for them. So if you're back up in the bay, you can very much do it with ideally what? Like a medium heavy rod, Luke, just so you got a little bit extra backbone to pull them away from the buoy line. But if you do it right off of like Cape Canaveral and you're potentially in 25 to 35 feet of water and these giant buoys with heavy duty like chains, you're probably going to need to beef up a little bit because once you hook a 10 or 15 pound triple tail, potentially the first thing they're going to do is go to that chain or go to that rope. So I would personally recommend for best setup. I think that because distance isn't nearly as important, if we were just having a setup for triple tail, I would prefer a seven foot. I would actually go with a jigging rod, something that's still light, but has a ton of backbone. And I'm probably going to go with like a select picked shrimp. And I'm going to get a number of them because there's going to be other critters, you know, that'll like little horn bellies and blue runners and things that are probably going to destroy the shrimp on the chain. Um, but I would say shrimp for me, like a big select shrimp is the way to go. And I mean, if you're sight fishing them, yeah, fish, like shrimp, Luke, you've gotten a ton on the power prawn. You're like that power prawn junior is legit. And I mean, pictures don't lie. Like you, you can go out there and you probably could get them on live shrimp, but if you don't have it and out of convenience, that power prawn's gotten it done when you can see them. Yeah, inside a report coming. I was I went out filming last week and I, I didn't get any big ones, but there's a ton of them out there. And I saw further down, um, um, looks like Sarasota to Venice is the zone that this um, this member was referring to. And go on the beach. And when they're on the buoys, you don't have to have big gear. And it's actually important to have the cast distance. So I just use my normal inshore setup, 10 pound braid, 20 pound mono leader. And I don't, I, this is literally all I've been using and this is remarkably good. So the power prawn junior, the junior works better than, this, than the big one and a quarter ounce jig head. I took the fly rod out last time and you'll see that in the inside report, they did not like the fly. They'll, they'll follow it. It seems like they really like the drop. They, they like to hit when the lure is actually dropping down. And, uh, and so I was working that fly and they're follow, follow, follow. And then I, then I would like wait for the thump and they would, they didn't, they wouldn't hit it. And then I, then I threw this lure on the quarter ounce jig head, swam it, swam it. They followed, I dropped it. They go down and then you can see that line, that line, you know, move. And then you get, let them, let them have it. Um, so 10 pound line, even the big ones that when they're on the buoys, they get kind of stupid. It seems like they, they will not, I haven't had yet had one go around the buoy. They'll they usually start going off the side and then, then you have them. Even if they go around the, the buoy, it's just, it's just rope, right? So uh, the casting distance is as big but if you're doing the channel markers i've been doing that too that's when you have to beef it up because these fish are powerful and they're very good about getting around the fixed objects so like at least 20 pound braid and i would say at least 30 pound leader uh they're strong and but man they taste good so that's like that's becoming one of my favorite fish yeah, it's interesting how near shore it seems like with any kind of jigging structure whether it's for cobia or triple tail i mean the cobia i caught with you luke that was on that uh the slam shady shrimp from z-man um, but the Kobe I've been catching lately have been on the power prawn. The shrimp I didn't think would be the best profile to have for near shore offshore. I thought it'd be a larger bait fish, but you know, you do see a lot of shrimpers out near shore. seems like that's a pretty sought after prey item for these, uh, these fish. So I, I would say stick with shrimp profiles. Would you disagree with that? Yeah, I'll, I'll say one, um, if that's not working and, or if it's like really windy and, and they're, sometimes they're holding right on the buoy where like if you don't bump in the nose, they're, they literally will not. They're a very stubborn fish, but that goes, that's good and bad. They'll sit there and, and you can cast 20 times at them and you get one right in their face perfectly, they'll finally eat. And so when they're hanging right next to the buoys, I go with the old leprechaun. I rig it weedless. That way I don't have to worry about getting, uh, getting stuck on the buoy. And they, they smack this. And I've caught some of my biggest triple tail on the, on this lure right here uh i've caught the most on the power prawn junior with this one i've caught some of the bigger stubborn ones that that they don't want to they don't want to move away from that buoy and they won't chase anything down and but you can bump it right on their face right up against that rope and uh, and not have to worry about getting getting stuck so those those are the two lures i take when i when i go out great question you got me fired up for triple tail fishing now 
So these Inner Circle Live Q&As, they take place every week and they're exclusively for our Insider members where they are free to ask any fishing related questions that they may have to help them start catching more fish. And if you're not an Insider member, highly recommend checking it out at saltstrong.com. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the best online fishing club in America, especially if you're targeting redfish, sea trout, snook, or flounder. There's nothing else like it because we actually guarantee that you'll start catching more inshore fish while saving time and money. We do this through premium education, our exclusive insider fishing community, and huge discounts on the best tackle for saltwater anglers. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com. Otherwise, we hope to see you again soon.